السلام عليكم ورحمة الله. Um, if you don't mind, I'm going to speak in English, uh, just to give some balance linguistically. Over the past uh, 24 hours, we've had a lot of presentations in Arabic. Um, before I start, though, uh, if we could just take a few seconds um, in prayer for those in Syria. If ever there was a reason to understand why we're here today, what's been going on, particularly in Halab over the past uh, 48 hours, is a stark reminder of that. And strength comes in unity, but also in prayer, so uh, if we can uh, uh, just spare a few seconds to, to think of uh, those suffering there. <clears throat> now, Bismillah. Um, over the past uh, 10 years, I've been working for Al Jazeera English, and as Muhammad was mentioning, um, most of my work over the past five years uh, has been reporting on uh, the uh, uprisings, as I would like to refer to them, or the revolutions, or the Arab Spring that have been taking place. And that has given me a unique insight into a lot of the unfolding events. So uh, I covered the uh, revolution or the uprising in Egypt, then Libya, Yemen. I've gone in and out of uh, uh, Syria several times, and also for the, 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 the political follow-up in Tunisia. And what that allowed for me to see as a reporter is that I speak to uh, the average Arab citizen, so from the taxi drivers to the baker to the unemployed 30-year-old to uh, the imam to the police officers and so forth, but also to the politicians and the political uh, leaders, both in terms of old establishment, old regime, or the new old regime in terms of counter-revolutionaries, as well as the opposition figures, other movements, the Muslim Brotherhood, 6th of April, and others uh, across the region. And there is a common thread that I've come to realize across all of these things. One unifying fact, and it is essentially the stumbling block that we face in this region. And it is uh, essentially the lack of vision we have in terms of trying to create something new. We live in a time that has been dubbed as the post-colonial era, post-imperialist era. The problem that we have never managed to accept and realize is that there has never been an end to colonialism and there hasn't been an end to imperialism. What has happened since sykes Pico was that rather than having boots on the ground uh, controlling us and colony, uh, essentially being registered as colonies under the British Empire or even the French and so forth, what the colonial powers managed to do was reinvent this colonialism and reinvent this imperialism giving us this false sense that we had some sort of liberation, be it under pan-Arabism or be it under even the ideals of uh, aspiring towards an Islamist reality or whatever it was, but there was no real liberation. And in order to try and uh, demonstrate this, I'm actually going to ask for four volunteers because I want to show you what I mean. So I need four men, please, to come up with their chairs. Bring your chair with you, please. We have one. I need three more. Okay, two, yalla, three, and the fourth, okay. So, these chairs essentially are the seats of power in the Arab world. And we're going to put them like this, if you don't mind. And we're going to put another one here. And, bismillah. I may, if you don't mind, Sorry to do this, but I need, just because the, we're going to do it, this is a bit physical. But can I get somebody a little bigger? Samahni. Lo mumkin. Mutaasif. Can I get somebody, just because, unless you're going to, uh, can I get a fourth person? Yalla, bismillah. You don't need to bring your chair because uh, Akhuna, he brought his already. Mashi. You can take a seat. Uh, you would like, no, no, turn around. Yes. As Arab nations, you always have your backs to each other. So this is what happens. And you'll sit down, inshallah. And you are like this. Nope. Turn around. OK. And I will, yes. OK. Now, so we have these states that were formed after uh, uh, Sykes Pico and post World War I and World War II that were set up essentially to 
give us this false identity of nations and we had these seats of power. This is unrehearsed, by the way, so inshallah it goes well. Now the seats of power were there for the different regimes and we had the people. The people obviously, Asaf, I need you to come a bit further forward. <clears throat> As Arabs and people in the Sharq fell asleep and they remained asleep for a very long time. If you can just get up for a second. <clears throat> Allah, bismillah. Hopefully this is going to work. It looks like it's not going to work, but we will work. La, la, your, knee, your feet needs to be on the ground. Yeah? Actually, this is no way going to work with these shirts. Yeah, but this really isn't going to work with these chairs. One second. We're going to try this one more time, but I'm going to put these chairs together closer. I apologize. Okay. <clears throat> Yes, so if everybody lies down, it would be great. You're the biggest problem here. All right. Now, I understand. I apologize. Sorry, one last time. If you can everybody get up, I did this the wrong way because I need to pull the chairs. Okay. And then back to positions. Now, sorry. So same, same, same as you were, seated exactly as you were, and this is going to work now. Okay. Alhamdulillah. Okay, so yes, you can sleep and they, and, they, and they stayed like this for years until Alhamdulillah there was a time in 2011 where people decided that they wanted to rise up. We all knew what we were against. We were against these seats of power. We were against the oppression. We were against the corruption. We were against the stagnation. Everybody knew what they were against, right? So the first thing what happened and everybody, you need to stay lying down, right? Let's say... Use both your legs. Bismillah. They said, Bin Ali Hirib, and he went. And then we said, actually, you're a bit heavier, so we leave you to the end. As you are. No, no, stay, 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 stay lying down. You stay lying down. Don't worry. You're not going to fall, I promise you. Well, not yet, anyway. Then Mubarak left. <laughs> or we thought, you, you're not going to fall down, don't worry. Ay. And then Qaddafi was gone. Bashar, inshallah, Qariban. <laughs> and then... Uh, khali, 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 don't move, don't move. I, I will move your leg. And then... Ay, bismillah. See, unfortunately, Khala Ali Abdullah Saleh was more difficult. <laughs> but the problem, you're going to stay as you are. Now you want to rise up, right? So the Arab people came to rise. No, 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 you rise. <laughs> but see, this is the problem. The problem was... What we demonstrated here, the problem was there was no vision. There was no vision of how to rise up. So we knew what we were against. But when the time came to rise up, there was no plan to rise up. So everybody fell back on to the ground. Shukran. Shukran. And this is... This is the problem that I want to focus on. This idea of having no vision. It's very easy to know what you're against. But it's a lot more difficult, and this is touching upon what uh, Ambassador Rasul was talking about, to have this idea of, okay, what are we for? What kind of future do we want? So when we talk about 100 years since Sykes-Picot, we know what's happened over the past 100 years. But what kind of reality do we want? What kind of states are we looking at? What kind of movements are we looking at? This idea to have some sort of liberation, intellectually and politically, to think of a new reality, to have some sort of innovation of thinking is something that is absent. It is almost like you're, you're stuck in a maze and this maze has been imposed on us by hundreds of years of colonialism and, and the ignorance and the poverty that has come with it. And rather than trying to escape the maze, we're just trying to break the wall in front of us. But you're still stuck in that maze. That doesn't, you can break that wall as much as you want, but you need to get out of it. So that's my assessment of the problem. Now, how do we solve this thing? Alhamdulillah, we are actually in a position of strength that a lot of it we don't realize and we don't tap in. We haven't tapped into these problems here, uh, to, to these, to these uh, positives that we have. Now, there is another problem I just want to tap in, and this as an Egyptian is something that really strikes home for me, is this idea that we constantly uh, pin our 
hopes or our aspirations on things that have happened before us. We live in the past in the most twisted way possible. So as Egyptian, the pharaohs have nothing to do with you. Yani somebody built pyramids or uh, Muhammad Ali or these, there is probably not even any genetic lineage between us and those before us. So this idea of trying to recreate things of the past is we have to get beyond it and start looking towards a future. What we have is a strength in our identity today, a strength that we have an international cosmopolitan identity that wasn't present before. And it's due to, in large parts, to, from, a, from, a, from a technological perspective, but also from the way the world is done because it's a lot smaller now and people travel and whatever. I graduated from uh, the School of Oriental and African Studies, SOAS, in University of London. This university or this college was actually founded uh, to train those who would work either as spies or people who would work in the British Empire uh, to be delegated in these uh, different areas. So at the time, in order to ensure that colonialism was going to maintain itself, they needed specialized people in these things. We actually, as this generation of Arabs and Turks and Kurds and even Iranians, have this graduation without even going to these places. We are uh, acquainted with these cultures and we're acquainted with these backgrounds and so forth that should help us and this is why gatherings like these are so important because it is from within them that we can start thinking about new ways of creating this new uh, 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 era or this new uh, phase for us in the region. Now another aspect is, and I think this is probably one of the more important things, and again, this is why not only is Sharq Forum so important, but geographically where this is taking place in Istanbul is so important, is the idea that the work has to be done both at home, i.e. in respective Arab countries in the East, but also in centers of power, in London, in New York, in Washington, Geneva, and so forth, and that finding that link between the two, having the work on the ground that is taking place in terms of liberating people's minds, in terms of thinking about new ideas, in terms of thinking about new ideologies, reconciling between uh, Arab identity, Islamic identity, and other things, and, and, and kind of working with the West, but also in terms of ensuring that there is a front row kind of uh, uh, dialogue that is taking place within these centers of power is very important. And to, Finish up, and this is probably the most important thing coming back to this uh, kind of failed demonstration that I was uh, trying to do. There's a quote uh, which I think is very significant uh, of uh, Malcolm X. Malcolm X uh, had, had said once that if you don't stand for something, you will fall for anything. Um, and I think this is the main important thing, and I think it uh, speaks to also the quote of Mandela that uh, the ambassador touched upon, understanding what it is we stand for. And it's not enough just to say, wallahi, I stand for whatever ideology or political party or group that one may aspire to, but really what do you stand for in the sense that what do you want your legacy to be? And sometimes we associate legacies with great people, uh, icons, but the, the, that's probably the worst thing. In the, in the end of the day, the legacy of you, you are somebody who yani, not only have people invested in you, you yourself are investing all your energy and all your uh, 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 work time and your money and your health and so forth. You don't want that to go to waste. So figuring out what it is you want to do in light of this uh, uh, idea and inshallah, to, to, to conclude, yani, the message to, 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 to come out with it is if we are looking to build a new era, the first step to doing that is accepting where we are now, but the, accepting the challenge of liberating our minds in the East to come up with new ideas to create uh, this new beginning, inshallah. Thank you very much.